Hi guys, how's it going? My name's Helena. Welcome back to the channel. Today is just going to be a really easy editing tutorial, but it's something that is very, very important that you carry out properly when shooting a certain target. But before we get into all of that, I've got a small announcement that's quite exciting that I'd like to share with you guys. So this year I'm honoured to be part of Wigton Book Festival's Big Bang Science Weekend. It happens every year and of course this year due to Covid, unfortunately it's online, but that's not stopping us at all. This year I'm delighted to say that I'm part of a panel with some absolutely wonderful people. It's actually going ahead tonight, so if you're seeing this in time, great, click the link down below and it'll send you to the live stream. It's 5pm UK time on YouTube and equally if you did not get the chance to see it you can also catch it in the link below. Same link as the live stream, it's just going to be recorded afterwards and uploaded to YouTube automatically. I'm really excited to be a part of it this year and although it's not in person I'm very very excited to be chatting with uh, with some humans. <laughs> so what do I mean when I say that there's a technique that some like to use when shooting the Orion Nebula? Well, as you can see here, this is a picture of the Orion Nebula and I took it the other night. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. It was an hour and 12 minutes of data, I think, which is a really short exposure time. But under my Bortle 3 skies, I was really happy to see that I got the dust out quite easily. This was unfiltered, by the way, not even like a UV or an L Pro filter, nothing on the telescope. So yeah, this was just over an hour of data. And what you probably notice is this area is quite white and it is going to be up the highlights blown out end of the histogram. Now some people like to keep it like this, I actually think it creates a really nice glowing effect and to be fair I would post that as a final photo but I want to show you guys a way that you can regain the detail back in Orion's core. And the way you can kind of gauge if you've gone too far is if you can see the trapezium of four stars in the core and obviously they're just not there. I mean, that's not true. They are. They're just blown out and you can't see any detail at all. Now, there's one thing you want to do in PixInsight to make life a lot easier for you before you go into Photoshop, and that's called HDR Multiscale Transform. You can find it in processes, all processes, alphabetical order, and come down to HDR Multiscale Transform from here. Now these are using the default settings, but just to bear in mind, I have tried these out and tested already, and I know that they do work for me quite well. You might need to adjust them dependent on your image, but I know that the number of layers set at six and the number of iterations set at one works fine for me. And what HDR Multiscale Transform does is it allows us to regain that lost data blown out in the highlights back in our photo. Now it's not going to be completely right as you're about to see but we can easily go into Photoshop and sort that later. So the first thing I'm going to use is I'm going to come up to scripts, utilities and I'm going to use the game script. Now this is a popular script within the Astro Pix Insight community but if you haven't got it already I'm going to leave a link down below to it so you can download it and install it on your computer. Once you've installed it correctly it's going to be in utilities under game. You're going to click on that. And what we're doing here is we're creating a mask of the core. What does this mean? Well, it basically means that we are about to isolate one part of the Orion Nebula away from all the others. So we only want to adjust the core because if you apply HDR multiscale transform to the stars, it's going to make them look really weird and funky and we do not want that. So we just want to isolate the core off from everything else. How do we do that? Well, we come into the game script and we click add. And this is under the ellipses tab and that's absolutely fine for what we want to do. And we can stretch this out to roughly where we want to regain detail. Now, I would just like to say that there are multiple ways you can make masks in PixInsight. One of them is range selection, but I just so happen to find that the game script worked quite nicely. And once you've got that circle or ellipse where you would like it, you're going to click OK going to do its thing and you can see that that has created a replica of what we've just seen but in black and white and what is in white is what's selected and what is in black is going to be protected so if we drag this over to the sidebar on here you can see that that's showing the mask and this is the part we're working on and everything in red is going to be protected so nothing in red is going to have the HDR multiscale transform applied to it. I don't really like seeing the mask, so I'm just going to click mask and uncheck show mask. 
and there's our photo back. I'm just gonna minimize this. I would recommend that you don't delete all of your masks and your photos and different versions of your photo. Just keep them up at the top. You never know when you're gonna need them. I've certainly been in a situation where I've gone into a declutter phase and I've wanted to declutter my workspace and I've clicked off the wrong thing and deleted the wrong tab and you do not want to be doing that. So this mask is applied, although we can't see it, but we know it's there. And this is gonna, and this is where we're gonna use HDR multi-scale transform. So if we just click the square, as I said, I've already used the default settings. That's gonna work its magic. The CPU in my computer is gonna chug along to that. It's going pretty fast, actually, I'm pretty impressed. And you can see that that has made a difference. Now, if we zoom in, you can see that this detail in the core was not there before. Now, you can see why we might have to do a little bit more work in Photoshop. This blown out part here, it's a teeny, teeny part of the photo, but that is the four star trapezium. And I would really like to be able to say that I captured that. So let's jump into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you how you can do that in the easiest way possible. Okay, so now we're in Photoshop and this is exactly the same photo that was in PixInsight, just with HDR applied to it. Now, I've created some layers over in the layers panel here and how you do that, if you want one layer on top of the other and you want to stamp what's visible underneath, now, if you want to stamp what's visible underneath and create a totally new layer, the Windows shortcut is Control Alt Shift N plus E, and the Mac shortcut is Control Option Shift N plus E. So I've done exactly that, and I've created a layer labeled Core, which you can probably see in the little preview down here is darker. And I've created the Orion, which is the one we did in PixInsight with normal processing, long exposures, two minutes outside, exactly the same as what you'd normally do. Now comes the part where I explain that you have to take two sets of exposures when you're outside on the field, actually in acquisition. And you're probably gonna be like, Helena, are you joking? You're asking me to do more work when I'm outside? I mean, I'm not joking, <laughs> but I can make it easier for you. So if we uncheck this little eye icon in the layers tab, that is gonna unsee the top layer. It's not the word but you get what I mean. And if we zoom in, this is a set of 25 second exposures stacked. And the reason I stacked them is I just wanted to make sure that the signal to noise ratio was quite good within the core and that the stars weren't obliterated by noise. And you can see that I have captured the four stars in the trapezium in the middle, which is what I would like to put here. <laughs> Now, before you go anywhere, you want to make sure that your top and your bottom layer line up. Firstly, your long exposure layer wants to be on top of your short exposure layer. And then you want to lower the opacity of your longer exposure layer. Zoom in and you can see these stars are from the short exposure layer. And you can see that they immediately line up with the stars on the top layer. So if we uncheck this, you can see that they line up completely fine. And that's how we know that the trapezium is gonna be in the right place. Now, firstly, what we want to do is create a layer mask. So if we come down to this rectangle here and this circle really similar to PixInsight's masks, and we zoom in on the area we want to work on. Now you've got to make sure, this is really important, you've got to make sure that your white, your layer mask is set. Now this is really important. You've got to make sure that you're selected on the layer mask and not on the actual Orion Nebula, the layer mask. Now the next most important thing you want to know is you want to make your foreground color black and your background color white. I made this mistake in the beginning and it was giving me some really funky results. So just do that right off the bat and you shouldn't have any issues. Then we're gonna come up into the brush tool, which I do use sparingly in Photoshop. I don't like to use the brush a lot on my photos, mainly because I, I don't feel like I have a lot of control over it and it does get out of control very, very quickly. And I'll come up here to where it says 49, which is the size of the brush. And this is really important. There's a lot of really important aspects to this. You want to make sure that the hardness is set to zero. And the reason for that is you don't want to apply a harsh brush to your image because that is going to create a really uneven blend of the core. The size, I'm gonna keep it at 49, that's fine for now. And then you want to click this opacity tab and you want to lower that all the way down to like 
13, 12 percent. You want it to be really, really low because you don't want everything coming all through at once. Yes, it's going to take a number of clicks to get that data to come through, but it's going to be spread out in a much more even fashion. As a demo for you, I'll just click here and you can see that even with one click, that's just got darker and we'll click again. You can already see the trapezium. You see how even at 12% with 0% hardness, this is a really, really strong and powerful tool. So you do want to be really, really careful. Now I am most interested in getting rid of this white part here in the core. So I'm just gonna be clicking away at this and blending it out. Now, one thing I would recommend is even lowering the opacity, right? Because if you're creating a dark layer in the middle, you want it to sort of gradually get lighter as you go out. So I'm gonna lower the opacity to even eight. And if I feel like it's blocky, I'll go around a couple of times again to blend that in. And then I'll go back to 12, was it? And then I'll do this all over again. And you can see that that's coming through quite nicely. Now afterwards, what I was most interested in doing was getting rid of this little white part here. And I did that in this final photo that I have here, which to be fair, I have done a re-edit since then. I'm not entirely happy with this. The blacks are clipped. It's not revealing as much detail as I want, but the concept is there and you can see that the core is blended much, much better than in the previous version. And there you have it. That is basically the simplest way you can blend two lengths of exposures in your Orion Nebula. Now remember, a glow in the core is absolutely fine. I actually think it looks really cool and artistic. And I might even post one myself with the glow in it as well as with the nice and balanced core. The important thing is you guys are enjoying processing and you're loving the images that are coming out at the end of them. So really it doesn't matter what techniques you use, as long as you're happy with your photo, then that is all that matters. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. And remember, if you have missed any Big Bang Weekend events, I'm gonna leave the YouTube down in the description. They all get recorded and put up there so you don't have to watch them live. You can rewatch them if there's something you think you'd be interested in. And with that all being said, I'm just about to show you my final edit of the Orion Nebula. Stay safe out there, guys. And I hope you're enjoying the clear skies where you are whenever you can.